Yeah, hello, and thank you all for being here. You already heard two great talks, and I hope I can round this up. So my name is Sasha, and I'm working as a backend developer at Grand Centrix in Cologne. And first things first, a disclaimer. Um, this talk is strongly inspired by the works of April Wenzel and her organization, Compassionate Coding. I'm not an affiliated with them in any way, and this is just my way of paying credit where credit is due and to make you aware of the awesome work they're doing. So, and if you like the talk, so you should really check them out. With that out of the way, let's get going. And yeah, communication. Communication is pretty much about transferring knowledge from one head into the other head. And it's all our jobs included. I mean, we have meetings, daily, retro, review. And we also have digitalized communication, such as Slack, Jira, Confluence. So we all do it all day, every day. It's an important part of our work. The thing is, we're in tech. We're all about solving problems. And we want to solve these problems in an efficient manner. Talk about efficient code, time management, and high-velocity teams. Of course, we also want efficient communication. And from my experience, that often means, for a lot of people, brisk and direct communication. And in this talk, I would like to pose the question if that really is the most efficient way of communicating. So let's start small. Let's talk, talk about code reviews. And let me ask you a question. Who here had a negative experience of a code review? Just like not feeling so good, having to think about it a lot. Yeah, quite a few hands go up, me too. So what? I mean, some people might say, yeah, people need a thicker skin. It's not my job to care about their feelings. That's the way tech works. I used to think like that. But it doesn't have to be that way. What if I told you there's an alternative? <laughs> and that alternative is compassion. And if you look at the definition of compassion, it's the feeling that arises when you are confronted with another suffering and feel motivated to relieve that suffering. It means compassion is not empathy and it's not pity because you actually want to do something about the other people feeling bad. So how might we be able to incorporate that in code reviews? Let's look at some examples. And I went from my own personal history of code reviews, so I'm going to eat my own dog food. And I'm going to show you a few things which might not have been so compassionate and how you can do them better. So passing off opinion is fact. How could that look like? Like this. This shouldn't be a helper. This should be a context, the lineup context. So what's the problem with that? The problem is that I give no backup. I mean, it could be my personal opinion. It could be something I've heard in a blog post or I've read somewhere. It could be something best practice. Who knows? The other person doesn't. I know. So how might an alternative look like? Like this. The Phoenix docs suggest to move persistence-related functionality in a so-called context linked to the docs. I think that's applicable here and would improve the project structure. What do you think? So that gives a link. It explains why I think this is a good idea, and it also asks for feedback so we can have a discussion about this. A better me might have written that. So asking judgmental questions is another thing, and I think that happens quite often. Why not use a view? The problem with that is that it implies the solution should be obvious, which in turn implies the other person is dumb. I make a veiled demand, meaning just that like, it's not a real question I'm asking here. I'm pretty much demanding to put it into a view. So a compassion alternative might be, you could move this into a view which has the benefit of separating the response building from the rendering logic. Again, a better me might have written that. There are a lot of different things you can do uh, wrong or better in a code review, and I'm not going to cover them all in this lightning talk. Um, I have a big list of resources I will send in the Slack and Twitter later on, so you can look at that. But some of you might ask yourselves, yeah, why should I care? I mean. If it doesn't have any kind of advantage, why should I do it? Yeah, other people feel good, great. Are we going to be more productive or what? Yeah, the thing is, being compassionate leads to better collaboration. Because ask yourself this question, which of the comments we just looked would be more likely to resonate with you? Which of the comments would lead more likely to a change in the way you do things? And if you're still not convinced, then I have some more sciencey things to back it up. In 2012, Google embarked on a journey to answer the following question. What's the secret to a successful team? 
And in two years of research, over 200 interviews with employees from 180 different teams, they compared 200 different attributes, and at the end they arrived at something called psychological safety. And if you look that up, the definition is the shared belief held by members of a team that the team is safe for interpersonal risk taking. A sense of confidence that the team will not embarrass, reject, or punish someone for speaking up. So what does it mean in practice? In practice, that means you have a protected environment for sharing ideas. So you're, you are not afraid to share your stupid idea because after all, your stupid idea might be genius. And you have a healthy culture around failure, so you don't ask the question, okay, who is at fault, but how can we fix it? There are, again, a lot more things which could cover a whole talk on its own. Um, there's a great article from the New York Times going into depth about this, and again, I'm going to share it. So, how can we build psychological safety? I personally think a one third approach could be compassion. And, yeah, okay, now we're going to be more compassionate in code reviews. Oh, yeah, all problems fixed, right? It's not that simple, of course. Code reviews are just a small part, and, but they are a great start. And now that you have an idea why these things might be important, let's go big. And let's talk about the tech industry at large. The thing is, we in the tech industry value a lot our intelligence. We talk about rockstar developers and code ninjas. And Maybe even worse, we make fun of untechnical people. Just recently, I've heard like if a customer requested our source code in PDF, ha ha. I mean, it is a bit funny, but uh, we had to ask ourselves a question: What does technical actually mean? And I've looked at the definition, and technical is defined as having special and usually practical knowledge, especially of a mechanical or scientific subject. Personally, I think the interesting word here is the word especially. It's not exclusively, it's especially. So it doesn't have to be a mechanical or uh, scientific subject. So based on that, what could be examples for technical knowledge? Programming Python, pretty technical to me. Accounting in Excel, I can't use Excel. I couldn't use Excel if someone would hold a gun to my head. Using Photoshop, I mean, you're using a tool to do something that everybody can do. Dancing Disco Fox. I mean, you talk a lot about technique in dancing. And at the end of the day, using chopsticks or a fork. I didn't know how to use a fork when I was born. I don't know, maybe you. So, just as we discussed, technical intelligence isn't everything. And it also is hard to define and put into boundaries. The thing is, when we say this person isn't technical, we pretty much say this person doesn't understand the stuff I understand. And yeah, being compassionate counts too. The rule of thumb could be try to avoid triggering the threat responses of other people. You personally can hand harsh criticisms, that's great. It doesn't mean everybody can. They might have a bad day, I mean, they might have had a fight with a spouse, they might have had a sick pet. Who knows? So just try to leave them a little bit better than you found them. And let's use this knowledge to build psychological safe environments for better teams and for more efficient communication. I want to close this talk with a quote from a pers the person who inspired me to do all this. The tech industry and the world is made up of individual, individual humans and a lot of those, those humans are suffering. Each of us has the opportunity to do something about it. A Provenzal, Compassionate Coding. So, uh, thank you for listening. And you can find me on Twitter, Twitter at wolf 4 or visit my website. And again, I'll post the links on my Twitter account and on Slack. Thank you. <laughs>